Hey everyone, Jane here, and today we're going to learn how to make a simple three-dimensional button in Procreate. So we're going to start by opening up our Procreate app and creating a new canvas. I like to use my 8 inch by 8 inch 300 dpi canvas. I use it as a standard. You can create your own or use whatever size that works for you. Now we're going to go into our brushes and into the airbrush section and I'm going to choose the hard brush. Now I've made some changes to the brush that Procreate initially gives you. If I go back and show you the brush that came with the Procreate set, uh, this one here, you'll notice that the minimum opacity limits in your general section is down at zero. I just move it all the way up to max for the one that I created because I want my edges to be crisp. Now that we have our brush, let's choose a color for our button. I think I'm going to go with a nice blue. A medium blue is good. And then making sure we're on our first layer, put it up as maximum as possible, and there is our basis for our button. A perfectly crisp circle. Now just to give you an idea of if you had used say the original hard brush that came with the Procreate, see how there's an opacity there even if I have it up in the max I don't get that nice crisp it comes through kind of translucent. So back we go and we get our nice crisp circle. The next thing I'm going to do is go in and select the contents of that layer, create a new layer and I'm going to change my color to black and I'm going to fill and I'm going to get a black circle now. Now I want two black circles and I want a white one as well. One of these will be on the bottom of my blue and one on top and then I also want to create a white one that will lie above the blue button as well. So once I have that selected and filled with the white now I've got all the layers that I need to make this three-dimensional button and I'm going to turn off the blacks and the white and go back to the blue. So let's start with the white circle. Select that layer and use the transform tool and make sure you're on magnetic. This is going to be your highlight. So we're going to move this diagonally. So you choose where your light source is going to be. I'm choosing the upper right as my light source. I'm shifting it slightly to the upper right just so I get a little bit of the crescent of the blue showing. Now I'm going to go back in and select the blue layer. So it's going to select my original circle, back to the white circle and choose clear. Now all it leaves me is a little crescent on the top right corner. Now again using the transform tool I'm going to move that crescent back so it lies directly above the blue circle where it did before. Line the edges up as best as possible there and you can just tap to either side to shift it very slightly. And once it's in place, go back in and choose your adjustments and go to Gaussian Blur. And now we are going to create the highlight. So move your pencil or your finger to the right until the blur looks just about the way you want it to. It might seem a little strong, but if it's in the right location, that's what you're looking for. Then you can go into the opacity for that layer and you can lower the opacity even more if you find the highlight is too strong. Now let's create the shadow that's directly opposite our light source. So we go to the top black layer and we're going to use our transform tool on magnetic and shift it diagonally down about the same amount that we did for the white. It doesn't have to be exact, it just has to eyeball it there. And again we go back to the blue layer, choose select, then back to the black layer and choose clear. Now you're left with a little black crescent on the bottom left corner. You're going to use the transform tool to move this back up above so it lines up again with your circle. Now your shadow is directly across from your highlight. Go in, choose adjustments, gauge and blur, and blur that shadow until it looks the way that you like it. Again, you might find it a little strong. Just get it in the location that you like it and then you can go back in and lower the opacity. And now you have your shadow on your dark side of your button and your highlight on the light source side of your button. Now we're just going to clean up the highlight and the shadow just a little bit. So go in and select the contents of the blue layer. Hold down the selection, the S, and then choose these two little arrows and it selects the inverse because you want the outside of the button, not the inside. Go to your shadow and clear. Now let's do the same thing with the highlight. You're going to go back in and you don't have to choose the blue again. All you have to do is hold down the S and your selection tool will bring up your previous mask. So here I hold down the S and it gives me my mask reloaded. 
and then I go back into my highlight and I hit clear and it just cleans up anything that's not lying directly on the circle itself. Now this last black circle at the bottom is going to be my drop shadow and that's why I wanted to clean up the other two shadows so they didn't affect it. So now I'm going to choose that layer and I'm going to use my transform and I'm going to again move the black circle to the bottom left which is where the shadow will lie. And you can choose how much of a drop shadow you want. This is all preference depending on how you want the button to appear. I'm just choosing a small drop shadow and then I use my Gaussian blur under my adjustments and I'm blurring it just so I still have a little bit of the black crisp around the button itself on the lower left corner. And then as I did with the other ones, I go back into that layer and play around them with the opacity until I like the look. And that's your basis of the three-dimensional button. Now let's go in and maybe add a little bit of texture. This gives us a nice smooth button, but maybe we want to add a little bit of texture to the top of our button. So create a new layer at the top, and I'm going to go into the blend modes, and for now I'm going to choose overlay. You can play around with them after, but overlay gives you a nice textured top. Then I'm going to go back into my blue circle layer and choose select so that I'm only drawing on the button itself. Then I'm going to choose a light gray and then I'm going to go across into my brushes and I go under the industrial section. I like the textures under there. And I think I'm going to go with this wasteland texture. So that's the one I'm going to choose. I'm going to go back in here and make sure I'm on the right layer because it's really easy to be drawing on the wrong layer if you don't continually look. So we want to draw on this top layer. Again, I want to make sure that I've got the gray that I want. You can mix it up a little and do a few different grays, but we're going to start with that one. We make sure we have our wasteland brush, and then we're going to go to the blue layer and select it so we are only drawing on the button, and then go back up to our new layer and start drawing in some texture. And you'll notice I have the opacity down fairly low. You can move it up slightly until you start to see some of the texture showing up on the button. You can keep giving it more depth by going in and changing the grays, but because we're using overlay, gray is fine. You can try using a color as well. That'll give you another look. You can really have fun with this and experiment with the different textures, the different colors, and the different blend modes. So once you've done adding in some texture, go back into your top layer and try out some of the different blend modes to see what kind of a look. If you were using a different color other than gray, some of these other blend modes would show up differently. This is where you want to experiment and find what works for you. Now once you have your shadows in place and your texture in place, we can go in and change the color of the button quite easily. So open up your layers and go down to the blue button and you select that. Now create a new layer and go in and choose the color that you would prefer for your button. We're going to choose a purple this time. So go back to my layer that I created and choose fill and now the button is purple. Once you've chosen a new color you can go back in and play around with the blend modes because your texture will react a little bit differently depending on what color your button is. And again we can go back in and we can try a different color of button. This time I'm going to try a very pale pink. So again I'm going to select the blue and fill it with the pink on a brand new layer so that I can choose which color this button is going to be. And there you have it. That's how you create a simple three-dimensional button using the Procreate app. You can experiment with textures and you can experiment with the blend modes and you can come up with a nice variety or you can just leave your button perfectly smooth. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and how you're going to have fun creating with this technique. We'll see you next time.